Good morning, Doc Robin here, and welcome to your weekly energy update in the actualization zone, or you might be watching me also on YouTube. So, hi, today is January 17th, 2023, and this is our weekly energy update. The way that this works is that I tune in to my guides, my higher levels of consciousness, and I see what energies are going to be working with us this week. We're going to, we've got a big week, actually. I don't know if you noticed this. Hi, Facebook users. If you're here with me live, say, tell me who you are. Just use your first name so I can say hi back. This platform that I use doesn't always show me who it is, just that we've got some Facebook users with us this morning. So, hey, before I get started, I've got a couple of announcements. One is, in just a second, I'm going to give you my number that you can text me. And then after you text me, you will be receiving messages from me via your future self or from your future self via me, actually. And um, you'll, so you'll get messages from your future self, also opportunities to just dive deeper into my world. And so you can text me actually at 855-545-0810. Five four five zero eight one zero. Text future self to that number, and you will be able to anchor into my world in that way. And you'll get daily messages from your future self, as well as updates on things that I've got going on in my world. You can unsubscribe anytime, of course, but I don't think you'll want to. There's a lot of good information that comes through those texts. I even get them myself. I love getting messages from my future self. So encouraging. Hey, Amanda, good to see you here. Okay, that's one announcement. And the other announcement is I just got back from Sedona. This last weekend, I was up there celebrating my husband's birthday and also doing some planning for the Becoming the Channel retreat that I'm going to be hosting for a very few select people in June of this year. That is the culmination of a six-month Becoming the Channel program that I've opened up. And we still have a couple of spots left in that, but I just wanted to put a B in your bonnet about that and let you know that we're going to be headed up to Sedona at the end of the Becoming the Channel program to celebrate the summer solstice and to really anchor into some of the higher frequencies that you're going to have access to during the program. The whole point of Becoming the Channel is to learn how to channel higher frequencies of consciousness, including wealth consciousness, so you can experience prosperity on every single level. This is one of the gifts that I've been given over the past probably five or so years as I've been working deeply with the Akashic Records and my record keepers, along with other councils of light. And as I've really stepped into and embraced my own it's not even an ability. It just is my own being a channel. It's one of the things that actually helped me recover from burnout early in my career as a psychologist and as an executive coach. For so long, I was pouring my own energy into my client's progress and into my client's work, and I was burning out. And once I realized that I didn't have to be the cause or the source of people's energy, but that I could actually allow healing energy, wealth consciousness energy, wisdom to flow through me, that's when everything shifted for me in my business. And so if that's something that feels really interesting to you, I want you to reach out to me privately. You can email me at robin at drrobinmckay.com and let me know that you'd like to have a conversation about working together in that in that program. There are a couple of different levels, but they are five-figure investments. So it's not for people who are toe dippers. The, this program is specifically for those of you who are, you know, you're to be called to be the highest level channel you possibly can for the best and most pure frequencies possible. So if that's you, I'll look forward to hearing from you in an email and we'll set up a time to have a conversation about working together in that capacity. All right. So with that, as they say, on with the show. All right, so I'm using the Akashic Records deck from, I think it's Sandra Ann Taylor's deck this week. And I drew these, I tuned in a little while ago and I drew these and I really love them because this is a good week to look at. The first card that comes forward is the Two Worlds card. And when I look at this card and I listen to what the guidance is about Two Worlds, it's this, that 
oftentimes we find ourselves toggling between two worlds, the old world and the new world, our intuition and our reason, the old way of doing things and the new way of doing things. And especially if you're somebody who has been, I'll use this word again, a toe dipper in the past in terms of going into spiritual programs or um, personal development programs for a little while and then coming back out and then walking in the other world. Have you ever done that? Like, I remember I went on a spiritual retreat to Hawaii when I was first starting my, my process and I just did a complete immersion into the spiritual realms and the energetics and really transformed from the inside out. When I got on the plane to come home, I remember I sat down next to a physician and I was working in the pharmaceutical industry at the time. And I was trying to have a conversation about the pharmaceutical industry. And I couldn't, it was almost as though I had forgotten the entire language, but it was a real shock to my system to try to move back into the old world when I had immersed myself in the, the world of spirit, the world of energy, the dance, the joy that I had experienced during the retreat. So, and that was definitely not a toe dipping experience. That was a full immersion experience. But what ends up happening, I think a lot is, especially when you're operating from a perspective of curiosity or seeing what happens rather than being fully committed to your spiritual journey and your spiritual development is that you can really feel it's almost a jarring effect on your body as you move from one facet, which would be spiritual development, energy work into the old world or the 3D world, which is, you know, sort of this semi-conscious rule bound world of, of where magic doesn't exist. And I say that loosely because magic exists everywhere, but people aren't necessarily attuned to it. So if that's you, this is an invitation to look at where am I walking in two worlds? Where am I standing in two different worlds? Where am I toggling between my spiritual development, what my intuition is telling me to do and what my logical mind is, is wanting me to do? Where am I not paying attention to my intuition? Where am I ignoring where my spirit wants me to go and instead paying attention to what I should be doing, what I must be doing, what I have to do in terms of duty, responsibility and obligation? So a good time to look at just answering the question, where am I toggling between the two worlds? You don't have to know the answer. You can just be curious about it. And one of the ways that you can know that you're being curious about it is when you see how you're standing between two worlds, you just wonder about it. And then you can ask another question, which is something like, and how, what is the best way for me to stand in my highest timeline? What is the best way for me to walk in the, the timeline where my intuition, where my spiritual gifts come online, where I am truly living, breathing, and operating as a light worker, a light leader. Yeah. So those are some questions to ask early this week about the two worlds. And the next card is the diversity or the diverse, yeah, the diversity card. I was going to say diversify, but what the message there is, is it's time to diversify your life. So if you've been doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result, guess what? You're going to be profoundly disappointed and frustrated probably as well. This is a great work week to look at where can I do something different in my life? Where can I take a different route to work? Where can I invest in myself in a new way? Uh, maybe you're being guided to go do a Thai massage, for example, or to take horseback riding lessons or to do something that is out of the ordinary. See, spirit, consciousness, energy, the freshest, most exciting, most exuberant energy exists in the new experiences. It doesn't exist in the stale, stagnant energies. It just can't. It's a living, breathing consciousness. So if you want to find more connection with your intuition and more connection with your own wealth consciousness, you're going to have to look outside the mundane. You're going to have to look outside what you've been doing every single day. Take a different route to work. Follow your intuition to take the horseback riding lessons or the dance lessons or the cooking lessons or something different. Do something different to infuse new life into your physical body, but also into your imagination. 
that's going to do more than anything else to set you on the path to your highest level consciousness, that beautiful highest level timeline that we've been talking about. The next card the guides wanted me to bring forward to do is uh, today is this one. It's the Buddha prepares. And if you look around, Buddha is meditating. Everybody else around Buddha is meditating. I don't know if that's actually Buddha, but it's a monk anyway, who's meditating. And the message here this week is hold. Don't take immediate action. Get yourself aligned first internally. Get yourself sorted internally first before you take action on something. That's the difference between taking intuitive action or, or aligned action and being impulsive in your decision making. An impulsive decision is something that you do when you haven't sorted yourself internally and you're, you're questioning, do I go this way? Do I go that way? What do I do next? How do I do this? Am I going to miss out on something if I don't engage in this right now? All of that comes from an egoic perspective, the perspective of your ego, and is driven largely by lack consciousness, fear of missing out. What am I going to lack? What am I going to miss if I don't say yes to this in this moment? So what this card is encouraging you is to take a minute, take a minute or take an hour and get yourself sorted internally. Come back to yourself. Make your decisions from a pristine frequency inside of yourself. And then when you make the decision, make your decision the right decision. So just go for it. Just dive in. That will be the most fun for you. And it will largely, not always, but largely take care of any second guessing yourself if you're really coming to it from that coming to a decision from the perspective of I'm centered, I'm grounded, this is the right direction for me. I'm going to be curious about what happens next. You can even feel that palpable difference as I, as I share that with you now. So be, be the Buddha for a little while this week before you make decisions. By the way, you don't have to take a long time to make a decision. You can center yourself very quickly and then make a choice. So you don't have to sit like Buddha on a mountaintop and grow shells on your head meditating before you decide something. That's not it at all. You can very quickly come into alignment and make the decision from a place of alignment rather than from a place of confusion or any kind of distorted energy that might be cropping up for you. And the last one, the last card this week is this one. This is the Ark of the Covenant. And superficially, this looks like, you know, just keep your contracts, but this is really a soul level agreement with yourself. Keep your sacred promises to yourself. If you have promised in this lifetime to develop yourself as a spiritual energetic master, then keep that promise. Keep that promise to yourself. If you have committed to yourself that you're going to grow and experience life in new ways and have new experiences that are quite different from what your family has experienced or where you come from or something that is completely outside of the box in terms of how the people around you are living, then keep your promise to yourself. This is an opportunity for no more self-betrayal. No more self-betrayal. Keep your divine contracts with yourself. All right. So that is the energy reading for this week. I hope you found it helpful. If you did leave a comment and let me know, it always helps me to support you even better when you leave comments. And if you feel like somebody in your sphere would benefit from this energy report, share it with them, invite them into the actualization zone so that we can grow together as we step onto our highest level timelines and really embody and channel wealth consciousness. Alrighty, Rue, until next time, I will see you later.